I've always advised people to find these support groups. And so I took my own advice and I'm on a few groups for caregivers for stroke survivors. And there's a lot of pain out there, y'all. There's a lot of people who are just at the end of their rope because they're all alone. And their family members, in a lot of cases, are not stepping up at all. What I'm like shocked and amazed at is how many people, their adult children, will say to them either, I can't do hospitals. They stress me out. I can't go to the hospital to see dad and to help you and give you a break. I want to call BS on that. Nobody, nobody loves going to the hospital to see their loved one who has had a stroke or has had some other catastrophic event. That is not something anyone wants to do. So to say, I just, I can't do it. I can't be there. I can't help you because it's hard for me. Personally, I'm just going to call it out as being selfish. And I've heard this way too many times to know it's just not a one-off kind of situation. Welcome to Aging in Style, the podcast dedicated to celebrating aging and what it takes to do it well. I'm Lori Williams. I'm a certified senior advisor and senior housing expert. In each episode, you'll learn stories of older adults who are thriving in their 70s, 80s, 90s, and in some cases in their hundreds. Whether you're an older adult or the child of an older adult, this podcast is filled with insightful resources, organizations that are doing incredible work, and stories that will inspire you to volunteer, learn, and who knows, maybe even skydive in your golden years. Hi, welcome back to another episode of Aging in Style. This one is sort of unplanned. I kind of had something on my mind that has been staying with me, and I thought, I just need to get this out. So I'm not in my studio. I'm just recording kind of on the fly on my cell phone, but it's just something that over the past few months I've noticed and I thought we got to talk about this. So as most of you know, my husband had a stroke in December, so we're about six and a half months into this. And, you know, working in senior living, as long as I have, I've worked with people who are caregivers for family members who've had strokes or have dementia or whatever it may be, but they are in that role as a caregiver. And I'm now finding myself going into that role as well. So as of right now, though, my husband is still in rehab, so I can't say I am the 100% caregiver as of yet. So I'm on several of these Facebook groups, which I always recommend people to join groups of people who are going through the same thing, the same struggles, the same thing that, that you're going through. I've always advised people to do that, to find these support groups. And so I took my own advice and I'm on a few groups for caregivers for stroke survivors. And the theme that I see, there's a lot of pain out there, y'all. There's a lot of people who are just at the end of their rope because they're all alone. No one is stepping up to help. And, you know, I'm seeing this in the groups. I'm seeing this with people I have talked to over the years and with friends who have loved ones who have had a catastrophic event. And what I hear are people who are just struggling and their family members in a lot of cases, are not stepping up at all. And I can't say that's true of my case because my kids have been, been great. My kids, you know, are 27 and 20. The 27-year-old obviously has been able to do more because he's older and, you know, he's not in college still like the younger one. But what I'm like shocked and amazed at is how many people, their adult children, will say to them either, I can't do hospitals. They stress me out. I can't go to the hospital to see dad and to help you and give you a break. I want to call BS on that. And this is going to be a little harsh. I'm sorry in advance, but it's just sometimes you need to just suck it up, buttercup, basically, is my my nice way of saying it. Nobody, nobody loves going to the hospital to see their loved one who has had a stroke or has had some other catastrophic event. That is not something anyone wants to do. So to say, I just, I can't do it. I can't be there. I can't help you because it's hard for me. 
personally, I'm just going to call it out as being selfish. And I've heard this way too many times to know it's just not a one-off kind of situation. And and I'm not you know, saying this is the younger generation doing this. I'm saying this is people of all ages. These are people in their 50s who aren't going to help their mom and dad, whichever one is the caregiver, and they may be 80 years old. So it's not a generational thing. So I don't want to be saying anything on our, our younger people because I think this is a, a cross-generation <laughs> issue. And then and also in being in these different support groups, I can't tell you the number of people who their adult children don't help them at all. So here's a, a woman, maybe she's 65 years old and she's caring for her husband who may be even bedridden from a stroke and she's not getting any help. And everyone is of different financial resources, right? So, you know, some people, they didn't have much to begin with. And now they've been struck with this catastrophic event and they really don't have many resources. So, I mean, there's just a lot of sadness and there's a lot of suffering out there. And I think it's a lot of silent suffering that most of us don't see unless it is in some way touched our life through dementia, through a stroke, something that has significantly disabled a person. You know, I don't want to just sit here and complain and say, <laughs> and give, give everyone a hard time, but I want to give some tips on how we can step up and, and do better for maybe our neighbor who's struggling or our family member. And also, I'm speaking to those adult children who are saying to their mom, oh, it's too hard for me to come to the hospital, or it's too hard for me to see him that way. And you know what? I've heard that from a good friend of my husband's actually said to me, I can't come and see him because I can't see him that way. Yeah. I mean, just let that sink in. That That's, I don't know, that's problematic for me. I'm not going to lie because whether... Your person that you love, your your family members had a stroke or has had some kind of an illness or an accident. They're still that person. And if you're truly their friend, you're going to still be there for them. Yeah, sure. It's hard to see someone you love and, you know, that you hung out with and had so much fun with not able to walk now or or have trouble with speech. But they're still that person and they're still in there. And anyhow. I think maybe I'm a different type of person sometimes, but and I'm not trying to be too harsh, but it may be coming out a little bit. But anyhow, what are some things that we can do for these people? Like I said, there's so many people out there who are in such pain and such suffering. What can family and friends do? And I'm going to tell you a lot of people... Don't ask for help. And and I'm one of them. It's hard for me to ask for help. You know, I try to figure things out on my own. I've got a clogged sink right now that I was trying to figure out. Luckily, my daughter's dating a, a sweet guy who's a plumber and he's coming to fix it. But we have to ask for help. And a lot of times, some of these people have asked for help and they were met with the, you know, silence or no, and they're not asking again. And And I've mentioned this on another podcast episode, I believe it was early on in this journey when my husband was still in the hospital, the people would ask me, what can I do? And quite honestly, my brain was just an empty blank, duh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what you can do because the shock and everything. So here are some things that you can do. And I got this list and I may add some of my own, but this is from a program out of Denton, Texas, called Stepping Stones. Actually, these are thoughts that came from some of the caregivers that they support there. And I think they're all great. So here are the tips in no specific order, but offer to prepare a meal and deliver with instructions on how to heat it up, like microwave or oven, or maybe it's something they can just freeze for later for when they, when they need something. Even if it's just like a loaf of banana bread or something, someone dropped off banana bread to us and, and my son, like, that, he totally enjoyed that. <laughs> but I mean, anything like that is a help. Just, just drop it off. Don't even, don't even say, Hey, can I, can I come at Tuesday? Do you need dinner? Just drop it off. Offer to prepare a meal and then stay and share it with them. 
you know, if they're open to some company, if you, you know, you kind of have to fill them out with the vibe is, but maybe you arrange that in advance. Like, hey, I'm going to make a lasagna and salad. I would love to come over and sit with you. I'll bring some wine and we'll sit and have dinner together. Would you like that? I think that's a beautiful thing to share. Offer to meet them at a local restaurant for coffee or a meal and and have them bring their loved one if they can come out and about if they're in a wheelchair or whatnot. Have them both come or if, or if one has dementia. Let's get together and have a meal together. Ask them if you can come and visit. Visit with both of them, just like it's normal. Just, you know, it gives that opportunity to just feel normal again. I did that recently. My husband's birthday was in June, and I texted his, you know, his dearest friends, and I said, hey, I want to do a party. Mark's turned in 63. Can y'all just come? I'm going to do cake and ice cream and just a little party for him. I mean, just to have that little piece of normalcy, having a birthday party, having his dearest friends there. And they were just all cutting up with him, all acting normal with him, talking. And, you know, even though it's hard for him to speak, he was understanding the communication was there, the love he felt and that that's huge and it felt it felt normal we're having a birthday party ask them if they could sit with your family member while you go out and get your hair cut get a massage take a nap whatever it may be if you're the caregiver for someone who cannot be left alone whether it's due to mobility issues or cognitive issues, whatever it may be, you're just not getting that moment. So you need time to get out, take a breath, and do what you need to do. You know, for myself, I run a business still, and my husband, thankfully, has come so far in his stroke recovery, and we're so, so, so thankful for that. But when he comes home in August, I... I wouldn't leave him by himself. And, you know, I do have my son, who is amazing, has stepped up to be there with his dad when I have to go out. But there'll be times like I told him, I want, you know, I want my son to have a normal life. I want him to go do things and not feel that he is always his dad's caregiver. So one of my husband's good friends who was at the birthday party, he said to me, listen, you call me anytime If you have to go somewhere, if you want to go out and do something, I will come and sit with Mark. We'll play cards. We'll hang out. We'll talk. We'll watch a movie, whatever. I want to do that. Y'all, oh my gosh, that meant so much to me. It almost makes me emotional even, even saying that because, I mean, that was just so huge that he offered that. You know, I didn't ask for it. He offered to come and do that and be there, you know, be there for Mark so that I can have a moment to do what I need to do. Okay, here brings us to another tip. Um, Offer to pick up and deliver groceries, medication, ice cream, whatever it may be. If you're at the store, and you know what, I have offered this many times to my neighbors during different, different things when maybe one was ill or, you know, something was going on. But if I'm going to the grocery, I always will text or call and say, hey, I'm on my way to the store. I know you're not feeling well. Do you need me to pick up anything? And most times they say no. But, you know, sometimes I think people say no out of politeness. But if you're calling, and I can say this, speak for myself, sincerely, if I am calling you and I'm saying, I am going to the grocery, and I hate to go to the grocery, by the way, but if I am going to the grocery, (laughs) I am happy to do something for someone else. And it would bring me great pleasure to be able to do that, to get pick up you some chicken noodle soup, some ice cream, whatever you need. So offer that. Offer to get them prescription, any prescriptions, anything you need me to pick up. I, I got you. Offer to ride with them to an appointment. So say someone has cancer, maybe you're going to get some sort of diagnosis and maybe you don't want to be by yourself. You know, I can say another example of of my own. Mark had to go to the heart hospital and have a scan to see if his carotid arteries were blocked, which which one was. I honestly didn't know what was going to be involved in the scan. And I was nervous. I was scared about it. 
And I didn't ask anyone to go with me. I probably should have, but I honestly did not want to be by myself during that scan. And it ended up being fine. And the driver who came, who brought him from his rehab was just a beautiful angelic soul. And he sat there and kept everyone entertained. And he was just, oh, just a godly, just beautiful man and made the experience a lot better. It put me at ease. But You know, back to that, you never know what kind of news someone may be getting, or maybe they're afraid they're going to get. And just to have that moral support is huge. Offer to get their car inspected, oil changed, washed and vacuumed. I mean, you know, that's kind of a beating sitting there waiting to get your car inspected. I just recently did that myself. Help them with organizing their home. We just did this. We had to I move my office back home because I'm trying to get things ready for when when Mark is is back home. And I felt it was important for me to be there at home with him. But it was quite like a, it's quite an adventure. It's sort of like Rubik's Cubes because we were like changing rooms with furniture and everything because I wanted my office downstairs. So I had some friends who own a moving company and they volunteered their time and they came and helped move all the big pieces of furniture down the stairs and what I wanted upstairs. And it was so appreciated by me because it's not something that I could have done. Many things I can do, but like physical strength, yeah, picking up a bed, heck no, that's not going to (laughs) happen. Offer to go with them and sit with them at church. So maybe if it's a couple and they always went to church and now the wife's a little nervous taking her husband because he may have some Maybe he's in a wheelchair and she's nervous about how she's going to get him out of the wheelchair and get him into the church. That's a valid concern. But what if you offered to go with and you help get her husband out of the car into his wheelchair, get him situated? That's a lovely thing to do for someone. Offer to mow their yard or rake up leaves in the fall. Organize their garage. This one really got me because my neighbors all came over and organized my garage. And my garage was a mess, not going to lie. Not going to sugarcoat that. It was a mess. And one of them noticed that it needed to be taken care of, and she organized the rest of them. They said, get some bins. They told me what to get. I got them. They came over. They were at my house probably three, four hours. Organized my garage, took things that we weren't using, we didn't need, donate it, whatever, you know. And again, I was still sort of in that time where my brain just kind of did mm, flat line. Like I couldn't, really couldn't make a decision on my own. So thank God they came and did it and they organized it so beautifully. I took pictures and brought them to Mark to see and he was just like blown away because it didn't look like our garage for sure. <laughs> Offer to help get the laundry done. Laundry is the bane of my existence, as it is probably with everyone. So it's a personal thing to do laundry. And I know one of my sweet neighbors offers all the time to do my laundry, but I'm kind of funny about it. But you know what? There may come a time where I really do need some help with laundry. And I know my sweet neighbor, Sully, I will be calling to do that. (laughs) Offer to take the garbage out if you live close by. So my son takes our garbage out most nights or most, whatever, most weeks. It's, I guess it's weekly it goes out. But what a nice thing to do for someone, especially if they're older and just so busy with their day caring for their loved one. You know, I just want to point out that you don't know exhaustion until you have taken care of someone all day, met all of their needs, helped them to and from the bathroom give them a shower, made sure they had food, just up and down, up and down, up and down. And listen, I've only done it for a few days. When I read on the support groups, what people are doing, how they go, do not get a moment to themselves. And at the end of the day, they literally just fall down in complete exhaustion, only to be waking up throughout the night because their loved one needs more help help getting to the bathroom, help with other things. Maybe they have medication. It's just total exhaustion. So if someone were to, that simple, simple gesture of taking out your next door neighbor's trash for them, I know it sounds so simple, but what a huge blessing for someone. Offer to pay for a few hours of a caregiver to come into the home and give them a much needed break. 
Not everyone can afford caregivers. Caregivers are expensive. And there's so many people out there who are struggling with that. They most certainly could use a caregiver, but they're not in a position financially to be able to afford one. So that is, if you can afford to cover a few hours and pay for a caregiver, I think that would be just a lovely thing to do. And then here's a simple one. Just call in once a week or every other week just to talk, to say, how are you doing? Maybe tell them a funny story or just, you know, remember some, maybe a memory, something y'all did together when, you know, things were different or just see, let them vent, you know, and, and I notice this a lot and, and I'm thankful that there are spaces now like Facebook groups, like these stroke survivor caregiver groups or dementia caregiver groups where people can vent and you know you're not alone and you're not going to be judged and someone out there is understanding exactly what you're going through. Because I will tell you, even though I have worked in senior living for 17 years, I have talked to so many people who are at the end of their ropes, they're caregivers, and I could empathize with them. I could understand what they were saying, but I've never walked in those shoes. I am walking in those shoes now. I am living it. I am around other caregivers who are living the same thing. And it's a completely different story. And to to see, and, and you know what, I'm going to also put out here, I am thankful. My husband had a major stroke. However, he can walk some. He can communicate with me. Other people who've had strokes, there's others who are bedridden, who are completely unable to communicate. It could always be so much worse. And for those people, my heart goes out to them. My heart goes out to everyone who's walking any kind of a struggle like this, any kind of a journey. But like I said, it just sounds weird to say I'm thankful. I am thankful. I'm thankful for where we are. I'm thankful for all the people who have supported us. But I know what kind of suffering is out there. And I wanted to share that with you on this podcast so that you can be more aware of what is happening. Or if you are the child of someone who's had a stroke, if your mom is caring for your dad, whether it's stroke, dementia, whatever it may be, and you're not stepping up, you need to step up. You need to help in any way you can because the amount of stress that your mother or father is under is unbelievable. It's unfathomable. That's my piece. That's what I wanted to say today. It just struck me this morning and I had to record it and share it with y'all. I hope it helps somebody. You know, that's always the goal of this podcast is to educate, hopefully inspire and provide some help or assistance to someone out there. All right. Thank you guys for listening. Be sure to go and subscribe to the podcast so you never miss an episode. And please share this with your friends and family. You can find more information in all of our podcasts by going to loriwilliams-seniorservices.com. Thank you. 